Hello, everyone. It's Jessica Pettit again. And who do I have the privilege of interviewing today? Hi, Jessica. My name is Lauren DK, and I'm a DEI manager with Nico White Consulting. A little bit about my background. I am based out of Atlanta, Georgia. I grew up in New Jersey. Um, I came to this space kind of in a unique way. I have a background in real estate finance and was in the finance industry probably for about 11 years um, and then was laid off due to COVID. But it sort of forced me to go after my goals because as a black woman being in corporate America amongst all white men, I saw so many things and I had clouds over my head of things I wanted to get off my chest. I just didn't, I never had the space to say it or research what I was feeling. So while I was laid off, I was able to take the DNI um, certificate from Cornell University and just network like crazy, attend webinars like crazy. And through LinkedIn, I um, met Nika White who is now my boss at Equal Consulting and um, through fate kind of just was able to get a job with her company. So I'm relatively new to this space, but um, as a black woman, not that new. <laughs> so here we are today. Yeah, there's like living learning, right? Right, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, I'm super excited to have you and it's always fun when I get to meet new people. And so um, anyone who's actually watching this, like uh, uh, Lauren and I both agreed uh, the cold, questioning is more fun. So like Lauren doesn't know what I'm going to ask her and I don't know Lauren. So I'm super mm -hmm. excited. New friends. Yay. <laughs> so the first two questions are big ideas that roll around my weird brain and there's no wrong answers. And I'm just curious from your perspective and lenses and all of your experience from all the different places is how they land on you. Right. So okay. that's your answer. So the first question is literally around the term diversity dividend. Now, the first time I heard this was when I was working with a client and they were like, well, what is the ROI of diversity work? The return on investment of diversity work, like first off, is a throat punch. What a stupid question. But I do get asked that question quite a bit. So I'm curious in your world, uh, diversity dividend, how does that land on you? What does it mean to you, if anything? Yeah, um, <clears throat> to me, I'm like you where people, when they ask the ROI, it's just like, to me, that's a form of white supremacy because it's like, what does it do for me? And how does it benefit me? And to me, it's like, okay, everyone deserves equity and everyone deserves a seat at the table. And if you're not seeing, until we see an equal amount of everyone and equal perspectives, there's a need for diversity. And there's, there's no, um, I don't think there should be a business case explanation because it's obvious that, you know, it's, we're not at a place where we need to be right now. Um, but I mean, I think if someone were to like put a gun to my head and say, <laughs> what is this, the dividend? I think I'd respond by saying, obviously when you have a diverse um, workforce, there's a diverse perspective and it opens up the doors of thinking in ways that you personally wouldn't think to think of. So for example, for Nico White Consulting, we just hired four new people and we have someone that is disabled be a, a white woman who a first white woman with a company and already the conversations i'm like wow i never thought of that and i didn't have that perspective so that alone is rich and great for businesses um i think also um thinking about the future population and how they're saying that you know racially wise and even gender wise there's going to be a ton of non-binary folks so i think you need to diversify your perspective just to keep up with what the future holds and to be able to um, present a workplace that is going to be within their expectations. Yeah, well, and I appreciate you just naming how white supremacy is so rooted in the, the motivation consciously or unconsciously behind asking the question in the first place. And it's how white supremacy links to capitalism right? Is that mm -hmm. you're, you're, if, we, if we're going to use capitalistic kind of language, <laughs> you are at a loss currently. And so anything you do is going to become more profitable because you are stifling people's talents and experiences in their own places. So thank you very much mm -hmm. for that. Yeah. Second question is more about your actual uh, experiences in any of the jobs you've had, et cetera. And that is asterisk other duties assigned. So I've noticed some people, including myself, I will intentionally do extra things that I'm not paid for, or rewarded for, evaluated for, because I'm trying to form a community so that I can live or thrive or survive. And mm -hmm. others 
are being hoisted onto me because of different identities I have where I'm not being paid for my emotional or physical labor, which feels like other asterisks, other duties assigned. Mm -hmm. So in your experiences, do you have one of the positive or the negative kind of situations you'd like to share or how does that land on you, other duties assigned? Yeah, I think, um, unfortunately, in my past work experiences, they've all been sort of negative. So for example, um, you know, whatever the reason we're both self-employed, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I get it. So I think um, being an African-American woman, it was always the insinuation that I should be part of the ERGs. Um, and then also once I got to the ERG, when I'm like, okay, I'm just going to be kind of like a fly on the wall. It was like, Lauren, what do you think? What should we be doing? And it was just all this pressure to come up with content and strategies that never followed through because we didn't work with professionals and there wasn't education around it. So I think I always felt a burden with that. And it got to a point when it's like, I should have been excited to go to those meetings. I was like, oh, I have to go to this meeting with all eyes on me and all this pressure of being tokenized. Um, I think also just working with all men, typically, I could have the same position. I was um, an investment manager slash asset manager for my funds. And another man was on that fund. But when we would go to meetings, it was always like, oh, Lauren's going to do the note taking and the recap it wasn't in my job description. I wasn't a secretary and administrative assistant, but because I was the woman on the team and they would kind of coax me like, oh, you're so organized and you, you're better at multitasking. But it was kind of like, I felt like I was stuck with that because I was the woman on the team. It, this is a, a, I so appreciate you sharing that because people don't necessarily understand that it's not just because I'm multitasking or I'm more organized, right? It's that as a woman, I have had to do these things. Mm -hmm. And I don't even remember now who told me this, but this worked great. But I was on a board and I was one of the few women on the national board of directors and some, I'm sure it was a woman, somebody somewhere gave me this idea, so I can't cite it, but try <laughs> this folks. Um, just no longer touch the markers or the pins back away when those are being handed out. Mm -hmm. And inevitably in these meetings, the, the men that I would be in these small groups with or whatever would just hand me the marker. And I would just say, oh, oh no. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I am really crass. So I would just be like, yeah, my <laughs> vagina has terrible hand. <laughs> and they would be like, uh, what? And I'm like, yeah, I don't want to take notes. And they're like, well, who's going to take notes? And I'm like, well, there's five of us in the group. Right. Just thinking. Mm -hmm. Y'all got external situations you can write with, or you could use a marker. I'm not mm -hmm. doing it, but yeah. I, I am feisty. Um, <laughs> but it was a really fascinating thing. And it was very empowering the first couple of times I did it too, because it never dawned on me to not take notes. Mm -hmm. Right. And I had right. even written a story about myself of like, well, it helps me pay attention or I don't miss anything or whatever. I'm adding value to the meeting. Like, no, my brain adds value to the meeting. Stop exactly. Me. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, that and also, yes, the Lauren said right there. <laughs> yes, that and also, like, because it was only me and then the other females were admins, I'd be tasked with like scheduling baby showers and like surprise things. And it was just like, okay, this was your idea as a man. Why are you telling me to do it? Like, execute your own idea. <laughs> but, oh, you know, all the girls' things, like, Hire a professional. It's not my job. <laughs> yeah, that's wonderful. Okay. Yeah. Are you ready for my two favorite questions? I am. Two favorite questions. Number one is what have you changed your mind about lately? Oh, and is this only DEI related? No, or? anything. I've changed my mind recently about okay. coffee ice cream. Oh, okay. I used to be a super no-go and now it might be my favorite. Yeah. I don't like coffee ice cream. <laughs> I Recently, I've changed my mind about being single and I don't know if it's because I'm 37 and still single but it was like this thing I was striving after and year after year it was like next year's gonna be my year and I'm a failure if it doesn't happen but now I'm just like I really love being single and like I just have a dog to worry about and I don't have to worry about anyone else's emotions if I go out I'm not worried about like men looking at me and it's just it's a freeing feeling because like if it happens it, I'm I hope it happens but um and maybe this is nothing new for most people that are balanced <laughs> But for me, I'm like, I finally don't care. And it's a really good feeling. So that's awesome. Yeah. Next favorite question is what do you absolutely know? I absolutely know that. Ooh, 
No, it's a good question, isn't it? Yeah. That death is certain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's so many variables otherwise, but everyone dies. It's true. It's mm -hmm. true. All right. So lightning round. I have icebreaker cards, one okay. through 50. So you gave me three random numbers and they will either be easy, intermediate or deep questions. And I'll tell you in advance. Your numbers were 25, 49 and 50, which I have to tell you, one of the side fun things about this particular uh, task is people choose the same numbers over and over again. It's very oh. weird. <laughs> and I think these are all first time numbers. Okay, good. I know, look at you. Okay, so first one, number 25, is intermediate and that is share a time when you felt you made a very important decision um i think pivoting into the dei space because i was at a point where i was making very good money in my career and i could have just went to another job and been unhappy and just said it's just a paycheck but I decided to take a job that I'm literally making half of what I was making before, but I'm so much more fulfilled. Yeah. Um, so it was a tough de decision. I had different angles to weigh, but I, I'm glad I made this decision. Well, that's amazing. What a great answer. Number 49, which is technically deep, although oh, as God. we learned in an interview with Dr. Lisa earlier, what is deep to me may not be deep to other people and what is easy okay. to other people may not be deep. So I say that and that I think that this, this is a, a question I would struggle with. So okay. putting that out there just in case. So question number 49, what is your favorite holiday and why? Oh, that, see, that is a deep question and because holidays are tough. So I'm going to say it is the 4th of July now, and not because I, I'm obsessed with the 4th of July, but because birthdays, Christmas, Mother's Day, Father, I used to love all of those, but both of my parents have passed. My dad actually passed late last year. And now I feel like those holidays have so much emotional trauma attached to it because I've lost my parents and they're, they're the ones that made those holidays great. So I always talk to my sister, I'm like, we have to go on vacation for Christmas and our birthday now just so we don't think about it. So 4th of July, it feels like a lighthearted, there's not too many emotional ties to it. So that's what my favorite holiday is. Excellent. Uh, I, I will concur. So both of my parents are gone as well. And when I'm I turned sorry. 40, I'm sorry too, right? But we oh. turned out okay. And yeah. uh, one of the coolest things anybody ever said to me when I told them that both my parents had died uh, was that what good parents they must have been to have such a short window to turn this out, you know? Yes, I love It's kind of a fun way mm -hmm. of looking at it. But um, so when I turned 40, uh, another friend of mine, uh, an older woman friend of mine was like, uh, you only turn 40 once, like mm -hmm. we're, we're fixing this. And um, I'm sorry, it was 30 to my turn 30. She's like, you have to have a birthday cake. And I was like, no, no, I don't have a birthday cake. No, no, no. And she's like, you are 30 years old. Your parents would be proud of you and don't like, I, she helped me like reclaim birthdays. Oh. Um, yeah. And then my partner and I, our favorite holiday is New Year's because we're like big goal people. So we like check mm -hmm. in about last year and this is, it's, it's fun. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Awesome. Okay. And go on vacation when you want to. Okay. So number 50, <laughs> also deep is what three words would you most like said about you? I would most like said empathetic, vulnerable, and inspiring. Excellent. That's great. Well, Lauren, if people wanted to get in touch with you, how would they go about doing that? So they can get in touch with me via LinkedIn. And I know you're going to share that link. And mm -hmm. also um, lauren at nicowhite.com is my email address. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for trusting this process, making a new friend yes, and uh, expanding our network of doing DEI work. So this has been wonderful. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you.